Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to set up Amazon SES from start to finish. I do have other tutorials on my channel. Uh, one of the more popular ones being how to connect Fluent CRM with Amazon SES. It's still totally applicable. However, in a tutorial like that, I did make mention that the sending domain and the authentication there was optional. It's now mandatory given the changes that several of the email tools have implemented, namely Google. So you're gonna to wanna to set that up. and I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. So let's dive in and get started. The first step is to go to aws.amazon.com and sign into the console. You can create credentials, uh, use the domain that uh, you're using for your website. And the important thing is that you have an account and that you can log in. Once you're logged in, in the upper right hand corner, you're going to see a location. If you click on that, you can drop it down. Here are all of the different regions that you can set up your account in. You need to set up your account in just one of these regions. I, for example, chose US East North Virginia for mine. I'm gonna set up this demo uh, inside of US East Ohio. And it doesn't really matter where you choose. I actually live in California. Maybe I should have chosen US West all those years ago, uh, but I didn't. So it doesn't really matter. Now with your region selected, in the search bar up at the top, you can type in SES and you can select Amazon Simple Email Service. You'll see a screen similar to this. And you can see the little message here that your account is in the sandbox. And what that means, it's that essentially Amazon does not trust you to send emails and you need to get out of the sandbox before anything that you set up here even works at all. If you need help getting out of the sandbox, I have a cover letter that you can use and fill in the blanks in inside of my all access membership. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. Okay, to get started, we want to click on identities on the left-hand side under configuration. Then we want to click create identity. We're going to choose a domain identity. This is your website, essentially. In my case, uh, if I was doing convology.com, I would put convology.com here. However, I'm gonna set up mine for a different website. It's going to be marketingfunnels.live. That's just the website domain that I have. So I'll set that up as part of this demo. Now we're going to check this box to use a custom mail from domain. And this is that authentication component that you've heard a lot about uh, Google and a couple of the other ones now requiring. Uh, if you're not familiar with the acronyms, this one is called DMARC. You can see here it stands for Domain Based Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance. Uh, so what you set here doesn't really matter. No one ever truly sees this. This is just authenticating uh, through your own domain rather than authenticating through AWS uh, or other tools. In the past, you might be familiar with uh, seeing something in like Gmail that says uh, sent by dougatconvology.com via or via AWS or some other tool. That simply means they have not authenticated through their own domain. So we're going to set up one here. You can use technically whatever you want. You'll see a lot of people put email. I think that's a pretty common one. You could also put mail. You could put uh, you could put anything you want. So we'll just put email for me. We'll leave all of these as defaults. And then for verifying your domain, they're going to give you some settings that you need to enter in here. Uh, they're called domain keys or domain key identified mail. It's DKIM, that's the other acronym. You've heard of DKIM, DMARC. There's another one in there called SPF, which we'll, uh, we'll get to in a second. But you'll see that we need to add some more settings here. So we're going to check the box for easy DKIM. We will choose the RSA 2048 bit, and then we can use the rest of this as default. Next, we'll click Create Identity. And now we're inside of our identity, or in my case, marketingfunnels.live. You can see verification is pending. That's because we have not made any of our DNS entries yet. We will proceed with making those together. Now to get those, you want to scroll down here and you're going to find this section. It's the Authentication tab. It's going to be different for you depending upon where you manage your DNS. I manage mine inside of Cloudflare. So I'm going to open up my Cloudflare account. I'm going to go to my domain in Cloudflare. I'm going to go to DNS on the left side and go to records. Everyone's is different. If you're using GoDaddy or any number of those, you just need to find where you enter in your DNS records. Now we need to proceed with setting up these CNAME record types. You can see here it says CNAME. So let's just start setting those up. We'll click copy next to that one. We'll click add record. We'll enter in under type. We'll do CNAME. We'll paste in what they give us for the name. We'll pop back over here for the value and paste that in here. And if you're using Cloudflare, let's not proxy. So uncheck the proxy there. And then you can put a little record comment. We can put SES here so that we know in the future, oh yeah, this is Amazon SES. And then we will click save. 
our first record is in, let's add another record. We'll copy this record, go to C name, paste in the name, copy the value, paste in the value, in my case, unproxy it, put SES and click save. The last one, let's jump through this really quickly here. Okay, our three DKIM DNS records have been entered. Now we need to go to our custom mail from domain. So just keep scrolling, custom mail from domain. That's what we set up when we created our identity. So we need to set up two records for this. We need to set up an MX record and a text record. So let's go ahead and copy our name here. Let's click add record and let's find MX. There it is, paste in the name. Let's find the value, copy that, paste that in. And then let's choose or comment in SES and click save. I neglected to note this on Cloudflare. They're all different, like I mentioned. We want to get rid of the 10 right here before feedback and put that under priority and then click save. There you go. So we'll come back here. We'll copy our text record this time. We'll add a new record. We'll choose or scroll down. We'll find text. There it is. We'll paste in the value or the name rather. And then we'll come down here and we'll copy the value. And the value is goes into the content box at Cloudflare. And then I like to put a comment that says SES and click save there as well. Okay, all of our custom mail from domain records are in. And now we want to set up our DMARC records. So we just need one more record for this. It's a text record. We'll copy that. We'll come back in here. We'll add one more record. We'll back down to text, paste in the name, and then copy the value, paste that in, put SES and click save. All right, all of our records for our custom mail from domain, our DMARC, and our DKIM have all been set up. Usually this is pretty quick with uh, Cloudflare. It's usually instant. Let's see how it goes. I'll just hit refresh here. And there it is, identity status verified. That literally verified in the time it took me to scroll back up and refresh my screen. So we're working well there. I do like to scroll down and verify that everything we entered was successful. DKIM success, custom mail from success, and then the DMARC I don't think actually has a success notice next to it, but everything else looks good. Now, although we did set up this DMARC record, let me walk you through how I would actually recommend setting this up. And it's it's all totally free. So there's a tool that you can implement that will actually manage all of this and make sure emails that you're sending or that being are being sent through your domain are actually being sent by you. So go ahead and Google Postmark DMARC and then click on this free DMARC monitoring from Postmark. This is pretty cool. It's just as a weekly email that gets sent to you that says, here is a list of what is sending emails for your domain and whether or not they passed SPF and DKIM. And if you have anyone, for example, in this little image or graphic here on the right hand side, it says other sources and these ones failed SPF and DKIM. And so you can choose what to do if that happens. Basically, if, if someone is trying to spoof your email and again, this the whole purpose of this DMARC and setup is so that people can't spoof it. Um, hopefully it reduces some kind of fraud. So we're going to put in our email address and our domain so that we can get these notifications. All right, and then click get started for free. And here they've given you the record that you want to add. Now, just to show you that this is okay here, if we go back into our AWS or SES setup for our identity, you can see that it says you can edit the value provided below to modify the DMARC policy that you want to apply to your domain. In our case, we want to copy what was given to us here now we want to come back into our DNS and we want to update the value here for our DMARC record. And let's just take a look at the components of this. So the P record determines what happens when the email fails to pass the authentication. Uh, so that's represented by the P. If we come back into our DNS records, we are currently set to none, which basically means this DMARC record is just a checkbox. We have one. It's not actually doing anything for us. So we want to change this to one of the values that's going to offer us more protection. And the values you can put in are none, quarantine, or reject. Quarantine, if we click on what that means here, quarantine means that it's going to go into somebody's junk folder. Reject means that it will literally just never hit their inbox. It won't even send at all. And like I mentioned, P equals none simply means no action is taken and emails that fail authentication will just freely flow through. Let's come back in here. We'll change this to reject. And then if we come back to the PCT, that's the percentage of how much, what percentage of the email is being filtered. So we'll leave that at 100. That's the default. The report email address in our example here is going to be left at the postmark email that was given to us. 
And then in our case, we will leave all the rest of these alone. So there's our DMARC policy. We will go ahead and save that. Last step you had to do was just click that blue verify button that says, go ahead and verify it, which we did. And now we've been told that all is set and you're good to go on the postmark side. You're gonna get an email and you're gonna get one email every week. I think I get mine on Fridays that basically says, here's a breakdown. And you don't have to use Postmark. You can simply use a different tool. If you put your email in there, you're going to get a lot of emails. And I think they send like zip files. It's just how DMARC records work, which is why I prefer to use this free service from Postmark. Now, depending on the service that you're connecting your SES account to, whether it's something like Fluent CRM or High Level, you're going to have different requirements for what's next. For example, if you're setting it up with Fluent CRM, I have a whole video on my channel. This is an this is an updated video to that, but there are certain components such as bounce handlers and things like that, that you can go ahead and set up by following uh, that video. I'll link that down below if you're interested in learning more about setting up Fluent CRM. And if you're setting up something like High Level or another service, you may need to come into the SMTP settings section here and then complete setting up the creation of SMTP credentials using that orange button in the top right. I have another video on that particular to High Level uh, but it could be applied to just about any other uh, platform as well. I'll leave a link to that video in the description as well. An additional component to getting your account set up for the first time will be to create an IAM user. And depending on the tool that you're integrating with, you may need to do additional settings with that. But go ahead and go to the search bar at the top, search for IAM, and you're going to see a section here for uh, managing access and resources. IAM, go ahead and click on users. In the top right, click create user and you can give your user a name and then click next and then click on attach policies directly. And you're going to be looking for under the search bar here, A-M-A-Z-O-N-S-E-S -S, full access. Go ahead and check the box next to that one and click next, then click create user. And you've got a user that is set up and usable for things like getting an access key, which in some integrations will be required. So if you're setting up something like Fluent CRM or setting up another tool that requires access uh, to an access key, go ahead and click on your user, go to the security credentials tab, and then scroll down until you find access keys and then click create access key. Based on the type of application you're selecting, if this were Fluent CRM, I would choose third party service. And then I would just say, I understand, and then click next and go ahead and click create access key. And then you're going to get your access key and your secret access key. I highly recommend that you download the CSV file or save these into like a password manager or somewhere where you won't lose them because you will not get them again and you'd have to recreate a brand new user in order to get a new secret access key and access key. Okay, that's it for the setup of Amazon SES. Like I mentioned, there may be a few other steps you need to complete, which I've covered in other videos and connecting to third party tools I've also covered uh, in other videos that I will link down below as they are relevant. Your last step will be to get out of the sandbox in order for any of this to work at all. And getting out of the sandbox can be a little bit nuanced. Amazon will hand select who they want to allow to use the service, which is why some people prefer to use other integrations and other tools but the benefit of SES and attempting to get out of the sandbox and gain access to the platform is that extremely low cost for sending emails. But that'll do it for this setup. I hope that helps. I'll see you in the next tutorial.